Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, first let me express my appreciation to ATM for inviting me to be part of this Moroccan conference on e-government development. It is a pleasure to join in this effort, and I regret that the duties at headquarters prevent me from being with you in person. As many of you are in the telecommunication sector, I'm sure you can appreciate the power of information and communication technologies to transform the way organizations function and on a larger scale accelerate economic and social development. Research shows that every 10% increase in broadband penetration increases economic growth rates on average by 1.38% in low- and middle-income countries. Ten years ago, there were only eight cell phones for every 100 people in the developing world, while today there are almost 90, opening opportunities for tens of millions of people in society who have felt marginalized or isolated to participate more fully and engage with others. And from mobile data collection apps to Earth observation systems, ICTs are playing a central part in environmental monitoring and protection around the globe. In the area of e-government, the gains from strategic ICT development are no less impressive. We have seen many exciting developments. E-government in the Republic of Korea, e-citizen in Singapore and Kazakhstan, data government in the United States, e-learning in Bangladesh, open government partnership in South Africa, Jordan, Brazil, Indonesia, Mexico, and some other 40 countries. Almost everywhere, there's a strong consensus of the value of e-government and the role it can play in improving relations between the citizens and the state. Where does a country like Morocco fit in this picture? In the recently released 2012 United Nations e-government survey, Morocco ranked 120th out of 193 member states in overall e-government development, up from 126th place in 2010. Almost all of the leading countries in e-government development in Africa saw improvements in their scores between 2010 and 2012, but slipped in the rankings compared to other nations. Their improvements did not keep pace with those of other countries. There are two exceptions, Kenya and Morocco, which not only gained in absolute terms but also re relative to others. What this signals is that Morocco has been slowly closing the gap in e government development thanks to efforts of the national government in developing online applications and promoting access to internet and mobile telephones among the general population. Looking at online services in particular, as opposed to telecommunication infrastructure and education levels, which are the other two principal factors in the UN analysis, Morocco's profile more closely resembles Europe's than it does the African continents. Government websites provide a wide range of information on public policies, laws, and regulations, and link to the other ministries, departments, and branches of a government. They deliver enhanced one-way or simple two-way communication with citizens and are often multilingual. And they are increasingly citizen-centric. Morocco is only one of 25 countries that provides information online, feedback received from citizens concerning service improvements. Where Morocco tends to lag other countries is in the provision of transactional service, meaning online payments, forms processing, consultation on government policies, and other types of two-way communications with citizens, business, and other organizations. In order to close this gap and successfully implement Digital Morocco 2013, it is critical to increase the number of e-services offered both by national ministries and by local authorities, and to make sure that citizens know about them and can trust that they are secure. 
special attention needs to be paid to vulnerable groups and to the use of mobile technology to foster equal access to public service. This is not an easy task. Countries that have succeeded in moving from traditional operations to online services, including some of Morocco's major trading partners in Europe and the United States, are taking whole of government approach. This means enhancing coordination among ministries and jurisdictions, reducing silos, introducing government-wide data standards, and nurturing e-government champions or chief information officers to carry the political vision forward. It is also clear that governments cannot meet all needs on their own. Open data and crowdsourcing are becoming more common in both high- and middle-income countries as governments come to appreciate the value of partnerships and innovation. As we note in one of our e-government surveys, open data enhances public sector efficiency by transferring some of the demands of government to NGOs, the private sector, and the media, which have been found to combine data from various sources in original and inventive ways. If Morocco is to retain its position as one of most competitive economies in Africa, administrative modernization of this kind will be essential. Once connected to the Internet, preferably by broadband infrastructure, business will be more inclined to invest in industries that are strategically important, such as transport, tourism, and energy. If G2B interaction is facilitated by its responsive e-government, and most importantly, continuing to consult citizens on their e-services priorities will contribute to ensuring a quality of life in Morocco that is among the best in Africa. One does not have to be as rich as the Gulf countries or Asian tigers to make a high level of e-government development a reality. Although, of course, it helps. Colombia, Malaysia, Mongolia, and Kazakhstan are each middle-income economies demonstrating a notable commitment to advancing ICTs for national development and improved public sector. In conclusion, I would like to leave you with three messages. First, inadequate telecommunication infrastructure, in particular limited availability of broadband, may be holding the country back. Aside from facilitating delivering of more advanced e-services to citizens and business technology plays an important role in competitive trade relationships. An enabling environment is needed to build national broadband infrastructure. This is already a priority of Digital Morocco 2013, but it's worth stressing. Second, Skilled professionals are needed to develop a national ICT infrastructure and services that run on it. Human capital, education, is a second major area where the country may be behind its major partners, putting Morocco at the relatively disadvantage. Educational opportunities need to be expanded, especially as far as e-government is concerned in ICT-related fields at post-secondary level. Third, more user-friendly online transaction services are essential, not just to apply for a driver license or pay for permits, but also to provide opportunities for participation by all people in the conduct of public affairs. The idea which has been applied by a few pioneers countries is not only government for the people, but also with the people. A country's commitment to a future of reform and modernization, a high quality of life, and economic success depend on it. Thank you. I wish you an enjoyable and productive session.